Hi everyone, my name is Jan, uh, I work at Red Hat and for the past around half a year I've been working uh, with Langchain4j which is a library that serves for, uh, for talking to LLMs uh, from using Java. And I'll, now today I'll talk about how to use Langchain4j uh, together with Quarkus because I work uh, on, the, on the integration between Langchain4j and Quarkus. Uh, so what's on the agenda? I'll explain why, what is Langchain4j, why you should use it with Quarkus. I'll explain what an AI service is because that's one of the core uh, abstractions provided by Langchain4j. I'll talk about other abstra abstractions uh, that it offers. I'll talk about retrieval augmented generation, which is, uh, if you don't know, that's the way how you boost an LLM with data from your own knowledge base, database, whatever, if an organization wants to create a chatbot that is aware of, uh, of something in their own database and stuff like that, you, you will need uh, retrieval augmented generation. So I will show you how to uh, quickly set up a, a RAG pipeline with Quarkus. Then I will show an alternative approach that doesn't use the, the let's say, standard RAG approach, which is uh, using embeddings. I will show an alternative approach that uses generated SQL queries. I will also show you how to build uh, autonomous agents by allowing um, the LLM to uh, run your own code that you provide. And yeah, that's about it. We will see how much time we have left because I don't think I will have any time for anything else. So what is Langchain4j? A library uh, that provides Java-based abstractions for working with LLMs. Um, you can, it, it works with uh, LLMs that are, there are either, you can serve them locally on premise on your laptop or in your uh, organization's infrastructure or the models that are provided somewhere online like the models from OpenAI and so on that you can't run on premise. Um, it has integration for uh, Quarkus and Spring Boot. I will talk about Quarkus here because I'm not a fan of Spring Boot. And yeah, of course, it's, uh, it's open source, so here's the link where you can find the source. Uh, so, uh, what are the main abstractions provided by Langchain4j? The more, the, one of the core basic abstractions is a chat model, which is an interface uh, that uh, basically ser serves uh, uh, as the entry point when you're talking to, uh, to an LLM like ChatGPT, something that provides text-to-text -text capabilities, or also image-to-text, depends uh, what exactly the model that you're using uh, supports. Then we have an um, uh, abstraction called Chat Memory that en encapsulates a history of a single conversation because that is necessary because LLMs are stateless. Uh, once you start a send a request, uh, start a conversation, it doesn't remember what you talked about previously. So when you want to continue the conversation and want it to remember what you, what you talked about previously, you have to send the memory again, uh, the, the, the contents of the previous conversation. Uh, Quarkus takes care of managing this chat memory automatically. I, in most cases, it's good enough. If you, ha if you need some more uh, uh, fine-grained approach, you can do it manually too. Then we support image models, that's for talking to uh, LLMs of type text-to-image, so that means you provide a textual description what you want it to draw, and it will draw an image for you. Uh, then we have what's called embedding model and embedding store, that's for the retrieval augmented generation and feeding the LLM with your own data. I will talk about that in the demos. And yeah, AI services, that's an abstraction uh, for uh, that allows you to um, uh, talk to an LLM in a more type safe way. I'll show that in a minute. Uh, yeah, and uh, important note, not LLMs, of course, uh, support all of these. It all depends uh, what, uh, what model you're using. Here I have a not exhaustive list of model providers that we support. Uh, there's much more than this, uh, but of course the, the most important and most well known is OpenAI. Obviously, then we have to support that. Uh, then there's Olama from, from Meta, Facebook, uh, which is a project that allows you to serve uh, different kinds of models uh, on, on your infrastructure. 
Uh, there we also support talk, uh, talking to Hugging Face models. Uh, Hugging Face is something like a GitHub for uh, AI developers. People uh, upload their own models, different kinds of models to it, and users can either download those models and serve them locally, or uh, have them served directly from uh, via the Hugging Face API without having to download them. We also have integration with the OpenShift AI, uh, with IBM Watson X. Uh, you can also use Instruct Lab models. For, for that's, the, that's the new project by, by Red Hat. Um, we support Anthropic, Mistral AI, Google Gemini. And as I said, more, model, more providers and more models are coming every day because this is uh, an area of very fast development. So nothing here is final, absolutely. Uh, AI services. What's an AI service? AI service is a, is a Java interface with some predefined parameterized prompts that allow you to uh, do some more type safe talking to a, to a chat model. Here I have a simple example. I have uh, something that could be uh, as, uh, inside a, um, a system with a chat bot that handles bookings for a hotel. You see, we have a method create, create, uh, called create booking, and the system message is defined as you are a robot that handles bookings for a hotel. The system message is like the, the uh, basic context that is uh, given to the LLM uh, with instructions how to talk to the user. Uh, and then there's a user message, and so uh, and the, the user message says that you should create a booking with a name, with an email, a start date, and an end date. And these are the parameters of the prompt. And the, uh, it's expected that the LLM will pr pr provide you something that can be transformed into a booking object. Uh, and booking, this booking object is a Java POJO, and uh, any kind of Java class can be used uh, uh, as the result of, of, uh, of an AI service uh, method. And how this works is that uh, the library looks at the booking uh, class, it sees what fields you have in that class, and in this case, we expect that the, the class has this, these fields named, email, start date, and end date. And uh, the, the library will instruct the LLM to, um, uh, to respond in a JSON format and explain what exactly should be in, in the response. So it will tell the LLM that it, it needs to provide a JSON object that has fields named email, start date, and end date. And this is how it can then be automatically mapped into a Java object so you can uh, talk to it uh, in, a, in a more type safe way. Um, other things that uh, AI services let you do. Uh -huh. Uh, the, the question is whether the instructions uh, are attached to the to the to the question. The, the, the instructions how to how to how to map to the to the final object. Um, the library t attaches the instructions to the question. It says that hey LLM, this is the the this is the the prompt, and here uh, is um, please respond in a JSON format that has these uh, these fields. In a respond with just an, a JSON document. And the LLM will respond with a JSON document, and that JSON document can be then transformed on the library side back after the, the LLM has responded. This will be transformed by the library uh, if, if the LLM returns the, the, the correct format, that is. It might not work, work always with all models. The, the model has to you know, respect uh, the, the instructions exactly. But uh, in models, reasonably advanced models like GPT uh, will, uh, will provide the correct uh, re response format and it will be possible to transform this into a, a Java object. Uh, now I'll uh, get to retrieval augmented generation, aka ingesting your own data into an LLM. Um, uh, I guess you most, most of you have at least a basic understanding how, how uh, embeddings work, so I'll just go through that very quickly. How would you, if you have a, a large knowledge base uh, consisting of some documents, con consisting of some information, how would you allow the LLM to search this knowledge base 
if, if, a uh, if a user comes up with a question that is related to something that's inside these documents. Let's imagine you have thousands or millions of these documents and a user asks a question and the, uh, the answer to that question is one of the, is some, uh, somewhere within those documents. Well, how would you do that? You, we can't just simply take all the documents and attach them to the, to the user uh, message, to the prompt, because that would be just way too much data. Uh, if, if when you use LLMs, you generally pay for each token that you send to it. So if you send uh, too much data, you would pay too much or even uh, go over the lim token limit of the LLM. So uh, you need some way to search for just uh, the relevant documents that will most likely uh, be useful for answering the question. And this, this is how, we, how it's generally done. Uh, the solution is embeddings. You have this thing called embedding model that transforms any kind of uh, text segment into a vector, a large array of numbers. And that vector is generally quite long. It can be 1,000 numbers, 2,000, 3,000 numbers. It's floating point numbers. So you, uh, and the embedding model transforms a text segment into, uh, into a vector in a way that text segments that are semantically similar uh, are mapped to si uh, similar vectors. So you map uh, the, the, the text segments into 1,000 dim uh, dimensional space in a way that text segments that are similar will be uh, quite close to, each, close to one another in, the, in this uh, 1,000 dimensional space. And then when a user actually asks a question, uh, we also compute the embedding of that question and we find the most similar vectors uh, in, uh, f among all of those documents that you have uh, available. You store the, all these documents in, in something that we call an embedding store and when a, a user ans asks a question, you compute the embedding of the question and uh, run a k nearest neighbor similarity search uh, uh, in the embedding store to find the most uh, relevant uh, documents to that question. And the, the, you retrieve this context and attach this context to a question to the question. So here, it's uh, there's an example here uh, in the to uh, bottom right. Uh, the red part is what is attached to the question. What is the rating of Star Wars Episode Four? It, it will find some you know, extra information that will be useful for uh, and for answering. Uh, attaches that to the question like this. And then uh, this augmented message, we call it augmented message, is sent to the, uh, to the LLM so the LLM can, uh, uh, can send the response. Uh, about the embedding stores, uh, we support multiple types of embedding stores. Again, this is not an exhaustive list. Among the most uh, popular ones are Redis, uh, Postgres with a PG vector extension. We support InfiniSpan, Chroma, but this is also something that uh, more and more vector databases spring up every day. This is a highly active area of uh, fast development. And yeah, you can also use an in-memory embedding, embedding store, which I will use in the demos. It's not very useful in, uh, in the real world, but uh, for, for the demo, it's, it's okay. So I'll, then let's, let's get to my first demo. I will show uh, the easy rag extension uh, for Quarkus, which is the easiest way to get started with, a rag, uh, with to build a rag pipeline. So let's get to it. Easy rag, uh, how does it work? Easy rag works in the way that you simply, you have documents, for example, in this example, I have some documents related to banking products. This is an example that could be used for some, uh, for some sort of uh, banking robot that has knowledge about banking products, about different kinds of uh, accounts that a bank provides. So you have documents that uh, have the information about the banking products. So here, in this case, you see there's something called the retirement money market saving account and what it offers that there's no monthly maintenance fee and so on. I have more, I have, I have here's another one like standard savings account and some uh, terms and conditions around uh, information about this kind of account. Uh, I have this all in, in a set of documents. These documents can be any kind, any, in any format basically, any supported format. We have Apache Tika, 
uh, underneath that reads these files. It can be pretty much any format. It can be um, well, plain text. It can be XML, CSV. It can be PDFs. It can be even images. If you have the Tesseract library installed in your system, it will run OCR over these images and extract text out of them and turn this text into uh, the text segments that will be stored in, uh, in the embedding store. And so with the easy rag extension, what you have to do is just take all these uh, files that you have with the, uh, the information that you want to provide to the LLM, and you just put them in one directory. In this case, I have this uh, in, this, in this catalog directory. And, and that's it. Uh, Squarkus, when you create an application like this and provide the, uh, the path uh, to, to, uh, to the catalog directory, uh, Quarkus on startup will automatically uh, turn all these uh, open all these files, turn them into segments, split them into smaller segments if they are uh, too long, the, the text in the files, and these text segments will be stored in, in an embedding store. If you don't pro, uh, configure um, a persistent embedding store like Postgres or something, it will automatically generate an in-memory embedding store, which is what I will be using in this demo. So let's just quickly start this application. I'll use uh, Quarkus in dev mode. I'll make this smaller. So it's starting. And here it says, it started a Quarkus application. And it's, it says uh, in the log, interesting documents from the path, blah, 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 blah. And in a few seconds, it says that it ingested four files as 10 documents. That, it, that means some of the files were split into smaller segments. There's a, a configurable maximum size of one segment. You don't want to store a huge chunk in uh, as a single embedding because that would be very suboptimal and contain a lot of unnecessary context and confuse the, the LLM. So what I did is uh, I stored these files in, in the, uh, in the in, in, in more in memory uh, uh, embedding store. Now let's run the application. It, it comes with a simple UI. There's this bank body UI. And now I have a chatbot that I can talk to. And the chatbot should uh, have knowledge about, about the banking, uh, about the types of uh, per, uh, accounts that we have. So uh, let's ask something. Let's ask about, I don't know, the standard savings account. What does the say standard savings account offer? And you see that the robot knows that it has a minimum deposit of $25, blah, 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 zero uh, ATM transaction and surcharge, surcharge fees, and so on. And this is because we uh, have that embedding store in place, and and the library looks into the embedding store to, to find the, the the relevant documents. If you want to see what actually exactly happened, and what kind of context exactly went to the uh, to the LLM, you can use, for example, our. Uh, what we call dev UI. This comes with Quarkus. This UI that I showed here, this BankBuddy, uh, is a UI that it's bundled in the application, in the sample application. Uh, but this dev UI is something that's bundled with Quarkus automatically. Uh, and you can do various interesting things in there. For example, we have this chat page where if I ask, just copy and paste and ask the same question. Uh, it, ha it has this nice uh, feature that after your, uh, your question is processed, it is uh, replaced with the, augmented, uh, uh, with the augmented message. So I asked what, the, what does that account offer, and this is what the library actually added to, to my prompt, answer using the following information, and here is some of the uh, segments from from the files that I ingested earlier, and this is the information from which uh, which you got the the uh, necessary information. Okay, so let's go on. Then I'll skip this one. Okay, uh, 
J this is just to quickly to show that there's more advanced use cases. You, uh, th uh, this, this was an extremely uh, simple example where you just, I just used one content retriever that uh, retrieved content from uh, an embedding store, but content retrievers don't have to always be based on embedding stores. It can uh, use a relational database. Uh, you can have multiple content retrievers. Uh, uh, that's called hybrid search. You can some of them can use uh, full text search engine, uh, or so uh, or different LLMs and and stuff like that. You can have multiple content retrievers, and then you can uh, if you con uh, retrieve content with them, you can then aggregate the content and inject and using a content aggregator. And then there's this thing called content injector, which is the component that actually injects the the, the aggregated retrieve content into the user message and produces the, what we call the augmented user message. Okay, I will sh now quickly try to show, because I don't have much time, uh, a, different, um, as a, a different approach to RAG, which is based on SQL instead of embeddings. Uh, it's ba based on uh, having the LLM generate SQL queries that uh, will return the necessary information to answer a question. I will have an example that uh, contains a database of movies. I will show you. Uh, it's sourced from from uh, a CSV file. This is a CSV file with information about movies. You can see uh, there's uh, always the movie name, year of release, category, runtime in minutes, genre, and stuff like that. Uh, this application is written in a way so that uh, this it runs a Postgres database automatically, and on startup, it, all of this is ingested into a Postgres table named movie. So it's a, in a relational database. And when uh, a user asks a question about, uh, about some movies, what we do is we have this uh, special AI service called Movie Muse Support, and this uh, uh, is called in the background, and it tells uh, the LLM to create an SQL query to retrieve the data necessary to answer the user's question using the data from the database. So we, in the background, we ask the LLM to uh, generate an SQL query. Then the application actually uh, executes uh, the query. That the content retriever does that. Uh, um, retrieves a result set and transform the result set into a, a, a set of JSON documents, and these JSON documents get uh, added to to the uh, to the user question. Let's quickly uh, start it. I, I will again. That it has all again uh, a UI built in the application, a very similar one, or basically the same. So, yeah. I will ask, what is the rating of the movie Inception? For example, that's one of the suggested questions that you, you can ask. So I will use, uh, use this question and ask, and it says that the rating is 8.8. .8. So how did it get to this uh, 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 correct answer? Here, uh, we have the application written in a way that it logs the, the generated SQL query. So first, it asks the uh, LLM to generate an SQL query. And here you see the query. That you select movie name and rating from movie. And this uh, is the, uh, the JSON document that uh, the result set was, was transformed into. And this was added to the, actual, to the original user question to generate the augmented user question so that the, the, the LLM knows exactly uh, uh, the, has, the, has the necessary information to answer the question. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's, uh, um, yes. This is the, the, the content retriever. He say it calls the create SQL query, logs it, uh, executes it with, with here and then uh, transforms that into a JSON, JSON object and uh, adds, that, adds that to the, uh, to the question. Uh, yeah, um, yeah if you, you, sh you will probably ask, how does the, how does the LLM know the, the schema of the table? Uh, well, the, ta the schema is added as, part, as, as um, 
as one of the parameters of this of this message. The, this is the schema string. This get populated automatically by uh, a description uh, of of what co what columns are in the table, and this is uh, derived from uh, from a, a Hibernate entity. So all this information from from this Hibernate entity class uh, gets uh, gets included in that description. Yes. Adding new embeddings on the fly. Uh, yes, of course. If you, specifically, if you're using uh, a persistent embedding store, you can, uh, if, uh, like Postgres or whatever, you can add embeddings on the fly. Uh, if embeddings are created from the result of SQL command, uh, there are no embeddings in here. Okay, uh, but is the data is the new class of the question uh, continuously created as you insert the data into the SQL database, or or is this just a one-time process at the beginning? Uh, in this case, in this simple example, I just uh, have the application written in the way that it will ingest the contents of the CSV file into the database once at start, and then, then it doesn't uh, do any more changes in the database. It only runs select queries in this, in this example. Generally, you can, of course, have, uh, have, this, could have this run on an actual database that, that changes over time. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Uh, what else? That was this is SQL. Oh, now, so now the last demo will be about tools uh, that uh, building autonomous agents that execute your own code. Um, in in this simple example, again, I will uh, um, instruct an LLM to write a poem about Quarkus and send it by email. Uh, writing a poem that's not a problem for an LLM, obviously. But sending it by email, that's not, not something that LLMs support out of the box, usually. So I will have to provide the, uh, a, a tool. We call it tool. That's a piece of code that sends an email. And we will provide the tool to the LLM and uh, allow it to uh, actually execute that code. So uh, let's get to it. That, that's this email a poem example. Uh, and this is what the tool looks like. We have uh, something, yes, we have this annotation at tool. Uh, you, when you have a Java method, you annotate it with tool, and you provide the description what the tool does. So we, uh, here you say that this tool sends the given content by email, and the content is, uh, is a parameter. And the method, what it does, it just uh, puts something into the log and uses a mailer object to send an email to a hard-coded email address with a hard-coded subject. Um, and we, I will run a, a, a mock SMTP server to be actually to, to the, that, that this mailer will actually connect to. I will run it as a Podman container. I'll run it here, and let's switch to, to the right uh, project here and start it. Um, the uh, the the SMTP server is is something called Mailhog, and it has this has this cool uh, cool UI where all the emails that get sent by the mailer will appear. So now I will simply uh, call the application using curl. I think it was was it like this. Yeah, oh, I hope that's correct. It, it, I think it's correct. Yeah. So now the L, now it called the LLM. The LLM wrote a poem and actually, and also uh, returned the poem in the in the response. And it says I have sent the poem about Quarkus by email. And if you look in the Mailhog uh, UI, that you see we have received two emails. Uh, that is, yeah, GPT 3.5 sometimes decides to. Uh, to, uh, to call the, the tool twice for some reason. Uh, if I change that to GPT-4.0, then the new flagship model then, then usually works correctly. But GPT-3.5 some, sometimes decides to uh, send the email twice. And how it works, uh, by the way, is that 
the application uh, sent the sends the LLM this this message. Write a poem, blah blah blah. It should be a few li four lines long. Send this poem by email, and it also sends the uh, the metadata about the the tools that are available to uh, uh, and. To, to the LLM, the LLM sees that it should send it by email, and there, that there is a function available called uh, called send an email, and ret returns back what we call a, a tool execution request, and the application then res uh, exec actually executes uh, executes the uh, the tool, and when the tool is finished. It uh, uh, sends another request to, to op the OpenAI LLM, uh, s uh, saying that the execution of the tool of the function was was successful, and then uh, the LLM can either decide to call another function or to pr produce the final response, which was in, which is in this case uh, s sending the, the f this this message that I have sent a poem by, poem by email, and here's the poem. And that's it. Okay, I don't think we have mu much time for anything else. Uh, what, what else do I have here? Uh, I will skip this one. Yeah, let's go straight to the summary. Um, Quarkus integrates Langchain for j as a first-class citizen. Uh, it uh, adds a lot of a lot of good stuff. You can work with different LLM providers using a unified API. You will have dev with Quarkus, you get dev mode with hot reloads, uh, the dev UI uh, that I showed quite a lot in the demos, simplified configuration. You can also uh, com uh, compile all of this into native mode with GraalVM. You get also observability, you get micrometer metrics and open telemetry spans, uh, traces generated. And uh, it's easy to get started with retrieval augmented generation. And it's, it's also easy to provide the, the LLM your own tools that it, that, uh, and you allow the, it to uh, execute your tools. So that's about it. Uh, if you're interested in learning Quarkus, I'm writing a book together with Martin, who's sitting over there. Uh, if, so if you want to book with 45% off, you can use this uh, code. And that's about it. I have like three minutes remaining, so I'll take questions if there are any. If we support all uh, models from uh, Hugging Face or some of them, it depends what exactly because uh, Hugging Face on the, on not only has text-to-text -text models, but it also has something like audio to text and text to audio, maybe even different many, 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 many types of types of models, right? But uh, we don't support all of them, okay. but we will gradually support more and more over time, of course. Yes. Uh, if with SQL queries I can get data from multiple tables or just one table, where in this simple example I wanted to keep it as simple as possible because obviously it's a demo and it can go very wrong. So uh, I keep it, kept it simple and used only one table, but it should be possible to, to generate more complex queries that span multiple tables. But even getting this to work is, can, can get sometimes tricky. I tried it with other models than GPT. Uh, I tried it with Llama and Mistral, and it didn't really work properly. These models just produced some quite, we quite weird SQL queries that didn't work or didn't I produce the right data. I'm wondering if uh, it's possible if, uh, if it happens that it generates some crazy joints which can overload your database. Uh, if it can, it can pr produce crazy joints, yeah, I, 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 that happens to me with, I, I think, Mistral. It creates created some absolutely crazy joints that didn't make any sense. Uh, and, and it just didn't work for me. <laughs> I'll, I'll try again, maybe with a later version or something, maybe I will get it to work. But for now, I, I just was just able to get it to work with uh, GPT 3.5 or, or GPT 4. Yes? Uh, if the, uh, the question is if uh, the embedding store will be used, the same embedding store will be used by all users of this application. Yeah, you mean? Uh, we are uh, interacting with, uh, with the same LLM. 
if, 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 the, if multiple users have, uh, interact with this application uh, that connects to, that uses the embedding store, they will generally be routed to using the same embedding store. But of course, you can develop uh, more complicated uh, rag pipelines that also quer contain query routing, and you can decide based on the user or based on the nature of the question to route the question to, ex to, to a different content retriever, and you can use different. If you can control it per user, yes, you, you definitely can. Yeah, that's stored in the metadata of the request, and uh, a query router can decide to, uh, to use different content retrievers depending on the user that asked the question. Yes. OK, we're out of time, so thank you.